Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of the press, members of the clergy, foreign dignitaries, welcome to this week's episode of American Outdoors, where I'm getting ready to do some spring maintenance on my Bobcat excavator. So if you've got a Bobcat, a series excavator, or a skid steer with the late model tier four engine, this one is a 2018. Stick around because I'm gonna show you the step-by-step -step procedure for how to change your fuel filter. The information that I'm going to give you today as well as the steps to replace this fuel filter come directly from Bobcat and they're specific to the late model tier four 111 cc diesel Bobcat engine. The fuel filter that I'm using today has a part number of 702-3589. 702-3589. We've got three different panels that I'm going to open for access. The first one is the very back. Push the button, exposes the engine. Then we've got the side panel, which he lifts up. There's a lever back there that will lock it. And then the access panel for the fuel filter itself is right here. And there's just a couple little thumb screws. Pop those out. Lift up. Set it to the side. The new fuel filter looks just like the old fuel filter. Now is the time to mark the new date as well as the hours. I'm going to put a catch pan right underneath the area where the fuel is going to come out. And the way this is designed, there will be some spillage. There's not much you can do. You just try to catch as much of it as you can. At no time while I'm replacing this filter will I uh, remove these fuel hoses. There's no need to, and you'll see as I start to disconnect the housing. And it's better that way to avoid risk of any contamination to the fuel system. So the first thing I'm going to do is unplug the electrical circuit. And there's just a little thumb tab right here. Push in, pull down, and it's out. Next, I'm going to reach right under here, and I'm going to open the drain. This is about the only time it's going to get a little messy. Okay. And I'll just let that empty out. I'm just trying to drain as much of the diesel out of the filter housing so I can avoid a bigger mess when I take the canister off. The next step, I'm going to just uh, be using some plain old oil filter pliers. And I'm going to lock on to the cap right here. And I'm only going to turn this a third of a turn. No more. And you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, that should do. Next, I'm going to remove this clamp. And just set that clamp to the side. Now I'm going to remove this housing from the cap. It can be tight. That's okay. It's normal. You don't need to force it. And you can almost always remove these by hand. Okay, the filter's off. There are two O-rings on this canister filter. One right here, and one right here. And I'm taking just a little bit of clean, fresh motor oil, and I'm gonna coat those rings 
just like that. Something that's pretty important, this is the bleeder on top of the canister cap. I normally use Allen and Torx bits. I don't really have wrenches, so they're a little taller. This sits up when it's installed right under here, and it's a real bear to get a socket and an Allen bit into the bleeder to loosen it up when you're trying to get the air out of the system before starting it back up. So as you can see, you know, that's a booger. So what I'm using is a quarter inch wrench, just like this, on a T30 to break that loose. Something that's pretty important, this is the bleeder on top of the canister cap. I normally use Allen and Torx bits. I don't really have wrenches, so they're a little taller. This sits up when it's installed right under here, and it's a real bear to get a socket and an Allen bit into the bleeder to loosen it up when you're trying to get the air out of the system before starting it back up. So as you can see, you know, that's a booger. So what I'm using is a quarter inch wrench, just like this, on a T30 to break that loose. I filled the fuel filter with fresh diesel. And now, I'm just going to hand tighten, just like I would an oil filter, back to the cap. Okay, and then I'm going to run this hose clamp back through the mounting bracket, going through this slot, so I'm inside the back of the bracket. When I first loosened this cap, I only turned it about a third of a turn, and then I unscrewed the canister from the bottom. Now, I'm going to tighten it approximately a third to a half of a turn so that these hoses will go back in position where they originally were behind the filter. Okay. Now it's time to reattach the sensor wire to the electrical connection at the bottom of the filter. It's really important that I bleed all of the air out of the fuel system. Otherwise, I'm just going to crank and crank, risk burning up the starter, uh, the high pressure fuel pump. Uh, it's just really not good on the engine. So. The bleeder cap is right here. I've already got a T30 bit and my quarter inch box end on it. And I am going to break this loose. And I'm going to turn it about, about three full turns. I'm not taking it all the way out. Below the filter canister, you can see is the primer bulb. So I'll set my Torx bit aside. You can put a rag around here if you want. Just uh, try and keep the mess down. I'm going to take this primer bulb and I'm just going to keep squeezing. You'll see air bubbles coming out of the bleeder. I'm going to keep squeezing until all the bubbles are gone. And all you can see is fuel. I'm 
Okay. I think we're good. Next, I'm going to tighten the cap back up. Time to start it up. If this video was helpful to you, be sure and like and subscribe. But if not, you're more than welcome to leave your comments, your complaints. If you need direction someplace, your grandma's pie recipes, put them all down there. Otherwise, we'll see you again next week. Thanks all, and God bless.